Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to be discussing uh, the last Mishnah in Masechet Makot. Uh, I had a high school teacher who used to say that if you uh, if you want to truly understand Jewish philosophy, you have to study the Sidur and study the things that we say on a daily basis. Unfortunately, the things that we say uh, in our tefillot oftentimes become the most rote and the most routine, and we don't think about what we're really saying anymore. Um, one of these is the Mishnah, like I said, at the end of Masechet Makot, it goes like this. Rabbi Haninya ben Akasha Omer, Ratsa HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Lezakot et Yisrael, Lefichach Hirba Lahem Torah Mitzvot, Shene Emar Adonai Hafez Aman Tzedko, Yagdil Torah Biyadir. Rabbi Haninya ben Akasha Omer. Rabbi Haninya, the son of Akasha, said, incidentally, uh, parenthetically, this is the only time we have a uh, a saying of this rabbi, Rabbi Hananiah ben Akasha, in the entire Shas. Um, he said, Ratzah HaKadosh Baruch Hu lezakot et Israel. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give Israel merit. Therefore, the Fichach, Hirba lahem Torah mitzvot. He made abundant for them Torah and mitzvot. He gave them a lot of mitzvot and a lot of Torah to study. As the Pasuk in Yishaya Membet says, Shene Emar, Hashem hafet Zaman Tzidko, God desired, so to speak, the Ma'an Sidko for his righteousness, Yagdil Torah Aviadir. So he made great Torah and he beautified it. So the Peshat of the Pasuk in Yeshaya, if you look over there, um, it's talking about the fact that God, for his own righteousness, as part of his own righteousness, made Torah great and beautiful uh, as part of his own righteousness. But Rabbi Hananya is using a Using the pasuk as a drasha, when it's saying that when it says leman sidko, it's talking about the sedek of Israel, the man uh, to make Israel uh, se- uh, an am of sedek and sedaka. So Hashem hafez leman sidko, leman Israel sedek. So he made Torah beautiful and abundant, and therefore he says, therefore, since he's doing it for Israel sedek, that's for their zechut. And therefore, there's a lot of Torah mitzvot to be mizakeh uh, Israel to give them a lot of merit. The 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 sim- most simple way, superficial way to explain this is that from the fact that there's a lot of mitzvot and a lot of Torah to study, the more Torah you study and the more mitzvot you do, the more reward you'll get. That's why they're abundant, and that's why it's zichut because you have more to do, so you get more done, so you get more reward for getting more done. That's the most superficial way. Um, there's another way to explain it. There's many ways to explain it. One of the ways that I want to focus on now is the one explained by the Rambam in his Perush on the Mishnah. He wrote a commentary on all of the Mishnah. He wrote this um, when he was from the ages of 22, about from 20 to about 30. He was run, writing it as he was uh, being exiled. He was running away from Spain the uh, Muslim uh, community, the Almohads, not the community, the, the Muslim Almohads were uh, taking over Spain at that point and were chasing out all the uh, people that weren't Muslim or killing them. And so he was forced to flee, um, and he write, wrote this perush on all of uh, Mishnah on the run. And at the end of his book, he says, um, please uh, know that I'm writing this book while I was on the run. I didn't have any. Uh, I didn't have access to all the resources needed to write this sort of work. Um, so if you see, he said he wrote. He wrote most of it from memory. Um, so if you see any mistakes, write to me and we'll correct it. Because what I care about is the truth, not because not for the sake of writing the book. I don't care about the writing the book. I care about the truth. So if you see a mistake, it could be that I. It's very likely that I, you are right and I did make a mistake. Um, but please understand my situation, he says. So this is the kind of person that we're dealing with, someone that obviously um, stands up for the truth and doesn't care to be right if he th- if he thinks that the other person he's arguing against has the truth with them. Okay, so he says like this, on this Mishnah he says like this, Misodot HaEmunah B'Torah Of the foundations of the Emunah in our Torah, in other words, one of the most important beliefs of our Torah is that she'im kiem ha'adam mitzvot mishlosha sehiv shesh meot mitzvot? If a person um, upholds one of the six hundred thirteen mitzvot, kefisha sarich v'charaui, as 
is proper. In other words, he does the mitzvah properly. How was that so? He says, And he doesn't um, like partner with it any um, any elements of this world with his doing of the mitzvah. In other words, he does the mitzvah purely and simply because it's a, it's a mitzvah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He says, Ela ose otah lishma He does it out of love and, and for its own sake. Harehu Behold, with that action, that one action of, um, of mitzvah, he acquires with it the life in the world to come. With one action, he acquires life in the world to come. So now, how does he explain the Mishnah? He says like this, Amar Rabbi Hanina, Rabbi Hanina said, Ki ha-mitzvot beheyotan rabot, Iyaf shaylo ladam shelo yikayem achad b'shlemut b'cho yemei hayav. Rabbi Hanina comes along and says, Since there's so many mitzvot, and there's so much Torah to study, it's impossible for a person not to do one mitzvah properly in his entire life. He has 613 mitzvot, and an abundant corpus of Torah to study, it's impossible. He's not going to approach that one time with the proper intentions and do it properly. And therefore, he'll be zochet to Olam Haba. So it's not a matter of how much you do. It's a matter of, do. are you going to get one right? And by getting one right, you're zochet to Olam Haba. So Rabbi Haninya says, yes, If you, since there's so many, there's more opportunities to get one right. Umin hare ayot shetilmad al yisodzeh and one of the proofs, so that now that Rambam is going to give you a proof that um, this is a true foundation of belief. He says, He she'elat rabbi haninya ben teradion, ma'ani l'chayel ma'ba. So he brings down a story that's in the Masechet Avodah Zarah Daf Yurchet Amur Aleph, where rabbi haninya ben teradion was um, teaching Torah berabim at a time where that was uh, forbidden by the Romans. If you were caught teaching Torah berabim, you would be put to death. And Rabbi Hanina ben Teradion is putting is teaching Torah Rabim. So the obvious uh, assumption here is that he's obviously someone that's worthy of Olam Haba. And yet, when a friend, a colleague, asks him, they says, uh, "You know, you're going to be put to death if they catch you." Rabbi Hanina ben Teradion answers him. He says, "What do you think my story is with Olam Haba? Do you think I have any uh, any chelik in Olam Haba?" And his friend, his colleague, instead of answering him, of course, you're teaching Torah Rabim, you're doing so many good things. You, you know, you, of course, what are, you, what are you even talking about? You're putting your you're putting your life on the line for Am Yisrael. He doesn't say that. What does he say? Klum ba ma'asel yadecha. Did you ever have an opportunity come to your hand? And now that Rambam explains what that meant. Kilomar, as if to say, im nizdaben lechal asot mitzvah karaui. He's asking him, did you ever do one mitzvah properly? And what does he say? The Heshiv lo, Rabbi Hanania answers it. Rabbi Hanania ben Tradion answers him and says, She nizdamna lo mitzvah tzedakah b'shlemut shetitachin. He says, yeah, you know what? One time I gave tzedakah really well. I had my money, I had my purim money, I had my, sorry, my uh, tzedakah money, and I had my own personal money, and an ani came to my door, and accidentally I took him from the wrong stack, and I didn't give it back to him. When I realized I didn't, I didn't, and I realized I had given him the wrong stack, I didn't take it back, which meant I was doing it for all the right reasons. And he says, And he's saying, with that one action of doing tzedakah, with the b'shlemut shetitachin, with the utmost shlemut that you could possibly imagine, that is what he was zochel olam haba. Not the fact that he was doing uh amazing things in terms of learning, teaching Torah to Am Yisrael at a time of Shemad, at a time of uh, oppression, but the fact that one time in his life, he did Siddhaqah properly. So, what does this tell us for us? In other words, what, what is this, how does this inform our conception of mitzvot and Judaism and, and, and the system of t- Torah that, that is set up with us? So, first of all, I think there's a uh, very much a misconception as to what the mitzvot are. Uh, a lot of times it's pre- presented, usually when we're young, but we, we don't grow out of it as uh, a sort of a, a scale 
that the more mitzvot you do, the, the more actions you do, we'll pile it up on a scale. And those are the merits. You have 800 merits. And then every bad action you do, you get a demerit. And then it's just how much more did you do? Did you do more mitzvot or more avirot in your life? And then that's it. That's how you're judged uh, eternally, based on how much actions you did. And, and never really about how uh, internally a person has changed. It's just about how, ma- how many actions have you done in your life that are deemed good by God and how many actions did you do that are deemed bad by God um, without taking into account the effect they have on the person. What the Rambam here is clearly saying, and I should make I should make clear, this is not his invention. This is a concept that's in the Gemara and Brachot. Um, the, uh, one of the rabbis, I forgot, I think it was Rabbi Yohanan was... Uh, no, it wasn't Rabbi Yohanan. It was um, Rabbi, Hanan, yeah, Rabbi Yohanan. Yeah, Rabbi Yohanan came to visit one of the rabbis who was sick, and one of the rabbis who was sick uh, said was crying. So Rabbi Yohanan asked him a bunch of questions. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? And each time he tries to give him, uh, he says, "Are you crying because you're not wealthy?" And then he says, don't worry if you're not wealthy. We learned this, that it's not about, you know. And then he tells him, "Don't you shouldn't be crying if you're not wealthy. And then he says, one of the questions he asks him, he says, are you crying because you feel you haven't learned enough in your lifetime? And then he says, Shanino, we taught, whether or not one increases a lot in his learning or he doesn't do as much, that's not the most important thing. What's important, that a person's heart and everything he does is directed towards Hashem. So even if you learned a little, but that little was spent, bitimemut and shlemut, directed towards ahavat Hashem and avodat Hashem, Hashem Shamaim, that's what's more important than the amount of pages you finish, the amount of uh, times you reviewed Shas. It's all about what's inside, what your heart. So this is not that I'm bombs and mention. He's not the only one that holds of the, the way that explains the Mishnah like this. Um, so I should make that clear. Now, so the system that we've been taught many times is that it's about scales and 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 weight and weights and and numbers. Um, and the truth is, is that in the Hilchot Teshuvah, the Rambam seems to indicate, seems to use that kind of language of scales and of numbers and 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 uh, weighing weighing out pluses and minuses and just seeing which one weighs more. But he makes a very clear caveat over there that only God um, knows how to give the erech, the value and the weight per each ma'aseh. So it's not like you do one good deed that's a one point and it. it's not a point system. It's a it's a value system in terms of how much have you changed because of this action and that change, that perfection, the amount of perfection you received will retain a certain value klapesh in, in terms of God, so to speak, and that will be how you will be evaluated in your uh, olam haba status. So it's not a system of numbers and and uh, and counting, it's more of a system of how perfected can you become through the mitzvot. Um, which leads into the next obvious thing, that the mitzvot, it's not about the quantity of mitzvot that you do, it's really about the quality of the mitzvot that you do, and, and, and the mindset you come to a mitzvah with, and your overall, um, the amount of perfection you attain um, through the mitzvot. And, um, you know... A lot of times around, uh, especially Elul time, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, or when there's a tragedy, Chas Shalom, we hear people telling us, you know, take on one action to do for yourself, one mitzvah, do start doing, one mitzvah, start doing, and that's that's honestly that's phenomenal because, especially for people that haven't been doing the mitzvot, at least now they're they're doing something that they weren't doing, but for one time, I'd like someone to say you know, start doing the mitzvot with better intentions and start thinking more while you're praying and start giving tzedakah for the right reasons and not so that your name is on top of a shul. Or all these things are... No one really talks about them. We just talk about doing things. We don't really talk about the intentions and the feelings and the emotions and the thoughts and the passions that go into the actions that we do. And it's something we really need to start talking about more.
the last thing that I think the, this Mishnah and, and the Rambam's Perush uh, teach you is that every single moment is infinite. Um, when you look at it as a system of acquiring amounts of mitzvot, then it's sort of like, okay, I'll do a lot over my entire lifetime, and then I'll have my whole lifetime is equally, my, whole, my value of who I am as a person comes at the end of my life because that's when I've accumulated my total amount of mitzvot. But when you look at it like this, every single moment of your life stands as the possible point of acquiring infinite life. Every single moment, every single mitzvah, every single act of charity, every single conversation, every single tefillah, is that moment where you can achieve your olam haba. So every single moment becomes infinitely precious, infinitely valuable, and this is what the Gemara means when it says, yesh shikone olamo, shikone olamo b'shahad. There are those people who can kone olamo, they could acquire their olam, their olam haba, in one moment. They do one action that so stands up for truth and emet and 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 HaKadosh Baruch Hu and his Torah that in that one moment they acquire their entire halak in olam haba. And when you think about that, it really changes not only your conception of Olam Haba, but Olam Hazeh as well. Every single moment is infinitely precious and infinitely capable of being that moment which lives on in eternity for you. And, um, you know, when we think about it like that, every day is not just, okay, let's see how many good deeds I could do today. Every day is, this could be the day where my entire life forever and ever and ever changes. And to just think about that and to live life like that, it's a completely different uh, plane to talk about. And it makes, you know, it makes every single second of every single day uh, infinitely meaningful. Um, I hope that these ideas now that when we say it in Tifilah, when we say it, when we say it, we can now understand what it's saying and hopefully have it impact our lives so that we can all be zochet l'chayel amabah with the biyat Mashiach. Amen.